so this is going to be a tutorial on how to make a basic 3D game with rigid body physics. So what we're going to do now is you're going to need Blender and Unity for this to work. So what you're going to do first is you're going to open up Unity. Now you're going to just ignore this. You're going to need to do New Project. You're going to name this something. So I'm going to name this First Game Tutorial. So we'll go, now there are three things we need to import. We need to import the Character Controller Unity Package, the Physics Materials Unity Package, and the Skyboxes Unity Package. Make sure this is set up for 3D. So we're going to create that. It's going to open that up in the editor. Okay, so it's just going to decompress all the imported packages. So it's going to open up blank editor that we're going to create the game in. So you can see how there's nothing here except this little camera. So we could just delete that. Now we don't have anything in the game yet that we could do or anything to use within the game. So we're going to minimize this and open up Blender. Oh crap. Sorry. We're going to open up Blender. And we're going to delete the cube. Now we're going to need to create a terrain for this. Something that our character can walk around in and collide with to have a grass texture. So all we need to do for this is go to Add, Mesh, Plane, Make sure this is centered. Now we're going to go over to here, to the Transform tab, and we're going to Scale. Make sure this is about as big as the edges. And you're just going to click, make sure that's done. Now we're going to go into Edit Mode, and we're going to need to subdivide this so there is an actual mesh that can be sculpted. So we're going to do, we're going to do the Subdivide button, now do this until it looks about here. If you do it any more, then it starts to get a little bit laggy, but not too bad. So once that's done, we have to go into edit mode and sculpt mode. So go into sculpt mode actually. Now here we're going to create the actual terrain, like mountains and valleys and everything. So this is where you select the brushes. So you select pretty much anything you want. I'm just going to use the F brush and I'm just going to start sculpting up like this to create a small mountain area. Now you could do whatever you want with this really and you could subtract if you want create like a little river going through it or something. You could pretty much do whatever you want. It's kind of nice. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to increase the size. I'm just going to add some bigger mountains over here. Add like a little peak or something. that looks pretty good. So now that we're done with that, we're going to need to smooth this out so it looks nice and flat and smooth. Not all bumpy and ridgy like it is right now. So we're going to go back into edit mode. Make sure everything is completely selected by pressing A so it shows up like this. Everything highlighted in orange. Now we're going to go under mesh, faces, shade smooth. Now if we go back into object mode, you can see it's all smoothed out and looking nice. Now before we um, before we export this, we're going to need to be in edit mode. Press U, make sure everything's selected, and press U. And unwrap. Now this will create a UV map of it, so the texture can be applied and tiled correctly onto this plane. So now we're done with this. So we're going to go to export 
and Autodesk, uh, Autodesk FBX. That's the file that Unity is going to import. So you're going to find where you saved it. I'm just, I saved the one underneath my documents. Now you're going to go into the Assets folder and create another directory called Models. And I'm going to call this Terrain. Now we're going to just export this. Now Unity will automatically import this if you saved it correctly. So it should be under Models now. Now Terrain just shows up very small when it starts out. When it starts out, so we're going to need to set the scale here to one and generate colliders so that the first-person controller can collide with the mesh. So once that's finished, you're going to go to Apply. That'll take a second. Now, once that is finished, you're going to take it and put it into the world. Now, right now, it is kind of small, so I'm going to set the scale to 50. So it's nice and big for this player to go around in. So that's going to be the main terrain for the game. Now right now it does not have a texture. So how we're going to fix this is we're going to go to create material and I'm going to name this terrain. Now this is going to need a texture. So I'm just going to go into Google Images and search grass texture and go to images and just select any one of these you want. I'm going to use this one. So we're going to select view image and save image as. Now you're going to find the folder in which you saved it. So I saved it on our first game tutorial. So I'm going to go to assets and within this I'm going to create another folder called textures. And I'm just going to name this grass texture. Now you don't have to create all these different folders, it just helps with organization. So once that's finished we're going to click on terrain and we're going to select the texture. So grass texture. Now that this is finished, all we have to do is drag this onto here. Now the reason this looks the grass texture looks so expanded within it is that it's not tiled. It's just put on as one JPEG image. So we're going to wait for this to be applied. Now we're going to double click on the ground and we're going to go to tiling and set them to about 20 is what I use. Just do it until it looks good when you zoom in. So something like this looks great. That, just look, that looks great. Okay, so now there are no lighting. It may appear there's lighting, so you click on this to see what the terrain is actually going to look like. So what we're going to need to do is add a sun, basically. So, gonna do, so we're going to go to Game Object, Create Other, Point Light. Now what this is going to do is create a sun type of thing. So we're going to increase the range to 1000 and brightness is going to have to be increased until you can see it. Now you're going to want this pretty high so it gets an even lighting. think that looks pretty good. So now if you go into game view, oh wait, never mind. Okay, so if you click on this, you'll see that there's lighting, pretty even. I'm actually going to bring it up just a little bit higher to get more even lighting. Oops. So just kind of play around with that until you get a nice even lighting like this. So now we're going to need to create a skybox so it's not just gray around this area. Now, because we imported that, it's going to be very easy. But first, we need to make a first person camera. I think I might have scaled the ground a bit big, actually. 
Okay, I'm going to change this to actually about 5. So it's not as huge. Just play around with that, like I said. So this is going to need to be placed on a train. So it looks okay. I'm just actually going to increase this to 10. So you just really need to play around with it until it's the size you like. But keep in mind that these three values need to stay the same so it stays proportionate. So that looks good. Looks about right. So now that we have this, we're going to need to add the skybox. So you're going to select the player camera. You can't just select this. You have to actually select the camera. And we're going to create the skybox. So we need to do add component rendering skybox. Now, because you imported these, these will all be here. So I'm just going to import the sunny. Now if we go to game, we can see how this is going to look. So that looks good. So I think now we could test it. So now we're just jump right into the world. So the lighting looks great. It's nice and bright. I actually might tone that down a little bit because it's just kind of overwhelming. But yes, so we have the skybox in there. Everything looks great. Now, if you want to edit a certain thing within the scene without having to find and click on it, you can go into hierarchy and select what you want to edit. So this one I'm going to bring down the brightness just a little bit so it's not as uh, glaring. So that looks good. So now that we have the terrain and everything set up, we're going to want to create some platforms and things for the player to jump around on. So the way we're going to do this is there is some built-in shapes within the Unity engine, like basic cubes and everything. So all we have to do is go into here, and we can create a cube. Now this one is pre-UV wrapped, which is great. Which is great for our needs. So we're, we're going to scale this up a little bit, maybe to 3 or 10. So there's a nice platform. And we can embed this in the ground. So there's a nice starting platform. Now this does have a, uh, a box collider, which is really good, because that means other things will collide perfectly. Mesh colliders will collide with this, which is great. So now we're going to texture this. So it's preview wrapped, we just have to create another material. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to create another material. And I'm going to name this, I think, I think I'll do a wood texture. No, actually concrete. So I'll name this concrete. And I have to go find another texture. So I'll search concrete texture. And I'm just going to find one that I like. This one looks good. Now make sure you do select seamless because that looks it makes it look a lot better. So you're just going to view image, save image as. Now it should stay in the assets file, so we're just going to name this concrete. Once that is done, we'll go to here and select the concrete texture and drag this onto the cube. Now it may go on there for a second and lag out, and then it will be fine. Now, the reason that there's no light on the side is because we do not have shadows set up, but that will be changed later. I just need to find that light. So I could bring it closer so it's not as drastic.
So that gives it more of a sun type of thing. I'm not saying you can play around with this all you want. So once that's finished, we are going to want to create some sort of objects for the player to interact with. So we're going to need to model these from scratch. So how we're going to do that is go back into Blender. Now wait, you don't have to do them in Blender, but you can. So you can either go to Sphere or you can model one with little changes, but I'm just going to use the basic sphere because it's pre-UV unwrapped and everything. And this also also this also has a box collider, sphere collider. So that's nice and set up. So for this one, what we need to do is create a material for this. So you can either put on your own material or just use a solid color. So I'm just going to use a solid color because it'll be easier. Now you need to make sure that you select this entire thing. So now we want some objects for the player to interact with. So in Blender, we can delete what we already have by going into Object Mode. You have to make sure you're in there. And then just hit Delete. Now we're going to want to create some sort of sphere. So go to Add. Now it has to be a mesh, remember. So you're going to create a mesh. Center that a little bit. Now it's not too good looking right now because it's not smoothed. So we have to go into edit mode, mesh, faces, smooth, shade smooth. Now as you can see, that made it nice and smooth. So this again has to be unwrapped in object mode. So it comes pre-unwrapped though because it's a sphere. So you're going to export again as Autodesk. Go back into Models and name this one whatever you want. I'm just going to do Physics Object Sphere and export that. Unity will refresh and import it. And there it is. So this one needs to be brought in Wait, wait, wait. Before you do that, you need to make sure to generate colliders and so on. And that the scale is 1. That's pretty much default. You pretty much always want to do that for pretty much any object. Now, this one we're going to scale down to 0 0.5, because it's about the same size as the player when you import it. So 0 0.5 is nice and manageable. Now, we're ne going to need to change something about this. We can't use them mesh collider. We need to use a sphere collider because mesh colliders can't collide with each other. So once we have the sphere collider done, that's good. Now we'll do, we'll need to give it some sort of color texture. So that looks great right there. Nice red ball. So now we could just see how that looks. I'm going to bring the character over here. Test this out. There we go, now we have a ball. Now, it is colliding, but we still need to create, make it a rigid bo rigid body. So we'll go into physics and rigid body, and that will be perfect. So that'll basically have a gravity effect, so it can roll within the other areas. <clears throat> and other forces can act on it. So right now, the character isn't doing it much, but walking around. We want it to do something else. So. We're going to need some sort of way 
that the character can interact with the sphere. So I'm going to use a dragging script. So you can drag the objects around. So I have this right here created. I'm just going to import that. Now basically what this does is whenever the mouse is over it, there's an event listener for when the mouse is over it, and then when you click on it, it will set the coordinates to right in front of you, where your mouse is. So I have this pre-created. Now I will have the script in the description. So just if you so basically what you do is you're going to do create JavaScript and you're going to name that whatever you want, just drag rigid body. And then just edit this. By double clicking, and it will open up an editor. Right here it shows what I have. So we'll open this. And it's going to open up a um, JavaScript editor for you for Unity. Now you're just gonna type in whatever you need here and whatever's in the description, type it in here, and then do file save. Once you're done, you can close that. Now, you're going to drag this onto whatever the object you want it to be on. So this one I'm going to use it on. This right here. So as you can see, drag rigid body is in place. So you're going to you're going to want to take off the drag though, because that makes it a little bit less. So I'm going to put that set that to one. Now the angular drag also needs to be set to one so it can roll. And you also want to click attach to center. So that will center, that will make it so you grab the center of the sphere instead of one of the vertices. So once that is finished, you're going to want to test it out. Now keep in mind that there, the mouse is not locked, so you actually have to click on the object. You can't just have it in the center of your screen like a cursor. That will be fixed once we export the game in final form. Now if you notice, the character looking is very sensitive, so we could change that though. So you can see the ball is interacting with gravity and everything, and you can interact with the ball and throw it and everything. So that seems to be working. So there's one more thing you're going to want to do. On this one, there is the mouse look. The sensitivity, I usually put around 7, just so you're not like looking around incredibly fast like that. So now you're pretty much finished with the sphere. So now we're going to just want to add a cursor. So when we um, export it, there's a little thing you can see. I'm also going to want to lock the cursor. So just on here, I'm going to add component, new script, JavaScript. We're going to name this lock cursor. Lock, not lock. Lock cursor. You can't put a space, forget about that. Okay, so we're going to do create and add. Now we have to edit this. So this will be here. So we have to open this within the editor. So we'll exit out of this one. Now this one, we need to keep the function start okay so within here you're going to push tab and do sc screen dot lock cursor equals true. Just debug this, make sure it's okay. So everything seems to be okay. So we're going to file save and drag this onto
So it should be attached to this. Yeah, lock cursor's right there. So we're going to test that. So it makes your mouse disappear. So it's not on the screen. And also locks it to the center of the screen until you click. So you can do that. Now, what you need to do now is create some sort of cur like cursor or like a crosshair in the center of the screen. Like, kind of like a Minecraft type thing. So we're going to... Um, Game object, create other, GUI text. Now, the text is just going to be a plus sign, and it's going to be middle center. Now, the size is going to have to brought up, so it'll be about 20, I'm going to say. Should look okay, let me just test that. So you can see there's a little plus in the center of the screen. So that's good. Now I'm just going to change that color to black so you can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to change that to 40. There you have it. There's your cursor. So now once we're finished with that, all we have to do is create a basic build of the game. So we're going to do PC, Mac, and Linux, player settings. Now you could set an icon if you want. So I'm just going to set it to the grass just for fun. Now what we're going to do is you're going to set this as a development build. And then add current. And you can save it under your assets and call this dev build 0 0.1 and save that. And then that's added to the game so far. Now, here you can change the resolution and everything that you want to use for it. So default is full screen, which is fine. And default is native resolution. So that's perfectly fine. So everything here looks good. So we're going to select build. And if you want, you can save this to your desktop or whatever. And so I'm going to name this first game tutorial. So it's going to compile all the scripts and everything into an exe, a portable exe. with some, I think, I, I um, okay, I think there's some system files and everything. No, okay, so there's an exe that you could use. So I'm just going to go to my desktop. I'm going to test this out. Close everything. Should be fine. And go to first game tutorial. Now, you're going to have to unblock it from your firewall the first time you do that. Don't, just don't worry about that. So you could change it to whatever resolution you want. So I'm just going to run it in this, and it's going to be windowed. Uh, make sure it's windowed, because if you do, if you don't, you're going to have to like log out and log back in, because there's no quit function right now. So it'll open up in a window, and it'll lock your cursor to the center of the screen. So this is basically your Minecraft type thing, so you could use the cursor to drag on the objects and everything. So there it is. 3D game with physics. If you enjoyed this, make sure to like this video, comment, and of course subscribe for more tutorials.